Over the years, I've received hundreds of emails from preachers from all over the world. Not to toot my own horn, but it's true. In these emails, they've shared with me their struggles, their challenges, their problems when it comes to preaching. And after reading these hundreds of emails, I've noticed some very common patterns. No matter if the preacher's from South Africa, New Zealand, Ireland, Canada, the United States, or any other country, these patterns are prevalent across denominational lines as well. So likely you've dealt with or are dealing with these two. Here are the top 10 problems preachers face and how you can begin overcoming them. Number one, the unpredictability of ministry can make your schedule a mess. And the thing that always gets put off is your sermon prep. Then what results? Well, another sermon thrown together at the last minute, right? You've, you've tried protecting your sermon prep time more than in the past, but your plans always get hijacked. Someone wants to meet. A staff member has a challenge and needs you. A deacon or elder calls you and two hours later, <laughs> your prep time is just gone. Instead, what you need is a weekly ministry plan and a repeatable sermon prep process that allows you to prepare your sermon in less time, complete with sermon checkpoints and deadlines. Number two, you have no plan for your preaching beyond a week or a month out in the future. So every week or every few weeks, you get a pit in your stomach because you know you need to figure out what you're going to preach on and what results are sermon series that are just half-baked and increased stress inside of you. Like, you know you need to sit down and plan your preaching further out, but it feels daunting and you're not sure how to do it. And even if you know how to do it, you don't feel like you have the time to make it happen. And what you need is a real realistic path to not only plan your, your preaching further out, but a way to get a week or even more ahead on your sermon prep and writing. Number three, you absolutely love sermon preparation. I know that sounds odd as a problem, but... What this means is like you spend far too much time digging into the nerd mine. <laughs> you, you know that place I'm talking about where you find all the highly nuanced golden nuggets that you love. And, and what you have at the end of the day, right, is too much, too much exegetical content with little to no tension points, illustrations, or applications. Like you've tried to limit your time in commentaries and Bible software, but the problem is while you have plenty of knowledge base on exegesis, you haven't developed the same skill set on connecting those textual insights to your people's lives and to their hearts. Number four, you struggle to think creatively and prepare dynamic sermon illustrations that are connected to the truths in the biblical text. Like, you know the value of sermon illustrations, but knowing the value of something and crafting them on your own, that's two different things. So, so you waste a lot of time watching and listening to other people's sermons to see how they handled the scripture and what illustrations they used. But res what results are generic sermon illustrations that, like, they haven't captured your soul, so your preaching, it falls flat. Instead, what you need is a pathway to reliably craft more sermon illustrations than you need every single week along with stacking up your own library of illustrations to use in the future so that you can use the best ones each and every week. Number five, your sermon content is too generalized, and as a result, it doesn't move people's hearts. Like, your, your people struggle to see deep relevance to their everyday lives from your messages. They're, they're left wondering what they're supposed to do with your sermon. So you study harder, you read more commentaries, you watch more sermons, but you keep feeling like something's missing and something is missing. You're failing to see that your issue may not be with understanding the scripture more, but with understanding the human condition more and connecting that to the text with, with all of people's struggles and experiences and narratives and fears and hopes and dreams, connecting all of that to the text. Number six, transitioning from preparation to writing feels like an extremely difficult puzzle because the sheer volume of your raw sermon prep materials are overwhelming. You know that you need to take that material and turn it into a sermon that's focused and easy to follow, but you find yourself getting lost in it all. You've gone back through your preaching books, right, to try to figure out how to best organize your sermon. You've Googled sermon organization or sermon outlines, but you're left with more questions. You're still in search of a path to turn your raw materials into a well-organized sermon. Number seven, your sermon lacks an aim, a goal, a desperately urgent matter worthy of people's full, unwavering attention. So instead of writing a message that opens up people to God's transformative power, it's just another day at church, the place 
you know, where lifelong churchgoers go before lunch out of routine. You've convinced yourself that people just don't care and that they need to get their priorities right. And maybe you're right on some level. But while you've become more cynical, you've robbed yourself and your people of the gift of transformational preaching. But I know that's not like where you want to stay. What you need is an approach to sermon design and sermon structure that actually helps you craft focused, tension-filled, gospel-centric, application-driven sermons every single week. Number eight, you try not to, but when you step into the pulpit, you flip on the preacher voice. It's so automatic that you don't even notice you do it until your spouse one day asks you, why do you do that? And your people, they trust you, but not fully because when you're on stage, you're a different person than when you talk to them in the halls five minutes after you say amen. Like you've thought to yourself that you need to become more authentic when you preach, just be yourself and let God use you, but you don't know how to go about finding your voice. And instead, if we're honest, you know that you tend to sound more like your favorite preacher than you sound like yourself. What you're missing is the thing every seminary should help students develop. It's a preaching manifesto that captures your voice and the unique calling God has given you so that you can preach as the person he's called you to be instead of trying to be someone else. Number nine, you either suffer from a perceived lack of energy or you come across as someone who just downed three five-hour energy bottles. (laughs) And it's not really your fault. Like your preaching courses, if you had any in seminary, focused more on exegesis than dynamic sermon delivery, but your people think you lack conviction due to your lack of energy, or they're distracted by your projectile energy levels. Wow, that was a little bit insane. (laughs) And if, and that's a big if, you're even aware of this, you want to improve your preaching delivery, but you don't know where to turn. So you watch other people's sermons. There's a trend. And you might even like watch your own sermons, but you're not even sure what to work on or how to work on it. Luckily, learning to deliver sermons in an engaging way is something you can learn. Like you can learn to use your energy to help instead of hinder your message, along with all the other fundamentals of powerful sermon delivery. And number 10, you spend more time making eye contact with your notes than the people you're preaching to. So all throughout your message, like you lack a real connection with your people. You're up on stage, they're in the pews, and between you and them is a large chasm. Like the sermon has become a public speaking presentation instead of a pastoral and prophetic triological encounter between you, the preacher, them, the congregation, and the Spirit of God. Like I know, like you want to have less dependency on your notes, but you don't know how to do it. You know that it would be best to wean yourself from a manuscript and go up to the pulpit with less notes, but you've been doing it this way for so long that you're not even sure that you can do it. It freaks you out, right? What you need is a practical approach and a plan paired with a new mindset when it comes to your notes. You can free yourself from your notes, I promise you. After all, the sermon isn't your notes. The sermon is what you proclaim. And here's the good news. You can, you can overcome all of these preaching problems because that's exactly what I'll help you do in Sticky Sermons Academy. You can go to preachandlead.com slash SSA to learn more all about the, the academy. It's a, it's a whole page that describes everything that there is about this course. And you can learn more and you can enroll. But just keep in mind, enrollment won't stay open for long. So today, right now, go to preachandlead.com slash SSA to learn all about Sticky Sermons Academy and how it will help you overcome your preaching problems so that you can reach your preaching potential. Preachingly.com slash SSA. I'll see you there.